Hello everyone, welcome to Botany Option channel for the UPSC examination. In today's video, we are going to see the concept of endemism. This has been given in your paper number 2 and chapter number 5. So first of all, what is endemism? Endemism is a phenomenon of restricted distribution of species in a small region. That literally means if some species, if say species A is restricted to very small area and not found in any other area beside this small area, then such a species we call that species as an endemic species. Now consider species B which is restricted to America only, that this B species not found in any other part of the world and such a species we call that species as an endemic species. And we call that B species as a endemic to the America only. All right. So endemism is a phenomenon of restricted distribution. Now, see the term restricted distribution. That means it is very restricted in a distribution of a species in a very small region. Now that this small region may be an island, maybe an country, or maybe some natural habitat which has which has a very unique environmental conditions. All right. So, example for the endemic species we have here is a Holmgren's buckwheat that is that is Eriogonum holmgreni is endemic to the Great Basin National Park of America. Now, in the photograph you can see here the buckwheat plant and it is strictly restricted to the Great Basin National Park of the America. That literally means this plant not found in any other region beside the Great Basin National Park of America. That is why this plant species remain endemic to the Great Basin National Park of America only. All right. So these species are very important to conserve right away because these already have very smaller habitat and in today's world habitat destruction is going on in very fast way and that is why we have to conserve the endemic species in an urgent way. So in this video, we are going to give you some homework. That is, you have to find out the at least one species which is endemic and you have to mention the name of that species in a comment box. All right. So the second example for the endemic species we have here is a Jingo biloba. Now this plant, Jingo biloba, as you can see in the picture, is endemic to the China and Japan. That literally means Jingo biloba, this plant is only found in China and Japan and not anywhere in the world. In the photograph, you can see here the whole tree plant is a Jingo biloba. It is also a living fossil which is endemic to China and Japan. All right, so this is the second example of endemism in plants. All right, now these endemic species have narrow ecological range and less adaptability, they cannot adjust to the new environment. Now, any particular species which we say to be the endemic in nature has a very narrow ecological range. Now, ecological range means certain species, say species A, has a particular environment in which it thrives very well. That particular environment is ecological range for that species only. And if that environmental range is not found in any other part of the world, that species would not grow in other parts of the world. That is the particular set of environmental condition found for the growth and survival of species A is restricted to the very smaller part of the world and that is why that species found in that part of the world only and that is why that species become the endemic species because they have very less ability and very narrow ecological range. In the photograph you can see here the, the ecological ranges of the climate is given here that some part of the world has a unique ecological combination shown in a yellow part have a same ecological and environmental condition that is why some types of species may favor such an environment. Now in a blue we have different region. Now this part of the world has a different environment that means there are there will be the different species found in this region. So any species which requires the particular set of environmental conditions for the growth will be the endemic species and which is have a very less adaptability for the other range of the environments. That, that is why they cannot adjust to the new environment because they want a particular set of environment for survival. Right? Now what, what are the causes of endemism? That means 
what causes to make species the endemic species why species becoming the endemic species what are the reasons so in the reasons we have where the species which become endemic is maybe due to the presence of some natural barriers there are presence of some natural barriers like seas high mountain ranges and the large deserts now in the photograph you can see here the sea is here and you find a particular island is present here now any species which is present on this island will have a specific environmental condition which is suitable for the growth of that species a all right now this species if that species want to migrate from this island to the other islands or say other terrestrial areas this species has to cross all this sea but this is not possible due to the large area of these seas so this sea act as a natural barrier this sea act as a natural barrier to confine this species to this island only and that is why species a becomes the endemic species right so natural barriers like seas can make species endemic species now there is a second reason, second natural barrier we have here is a mountain now you can see here the large mountain in the photograph now what happens in a natural habitat some species are growing in a bottom of the mountain in the valley all right and due to the surrounding mountain these species cannot migrate from this place to the another place also their seeds and spores were also got restricted to this area only because wind cannot blow them above to this mountain range all right so that means this mountain make this these species to remain endemic in that villa only so again this is the very natural barrier which making the species the endemic species that is the high mountain ranges then we have the large deserts in a third photograph you can see here it is a desert now any species which is adapted to the desertic condition will try to go beyond this desertic condition but due to the large size of these deserts the seed dispersal and the very less any animal presence the seed dispersal is not possible and hence these species are forced to live in the desertic conditions only and that is why these species became the endemic species to the desert zone all right so there are very natural causes why species becoming the endangered species and these natural barriers are the seas high mountain ranges and the large deserts etc all right now there is another cause of endemism as well this is the poor adaptability of a species for the wide range of the ecological conditions as we have discussed earlier if we consider the species a is a very well adapted to the rainforest all right so in the first photograph you can see here the rainforest now species a is very well adapted to the rainforest because it requires the large amount of water and this large amount of water the species a and the species a get this large amount of water in the rainforest that is why species a can thrive and survive in a rainforest but such a species is not found in a grasslands because there is no large availability of water in the grassland so does to the deserts now deserts as we know we really don't have any water so that is why species a cannot survive in a deserts as well next ecological range we have here is a aquatic habitat now aquatic habitat on the other hand have plenty of water that plants always remain submerged into the water now species a here will also not get adapted because it is not adapted to the aquatic conditions that means the species a can only survive in the rainforest and it cannot be adapted to the other ecological conditions so the cause for the endemism is a poor adaptability of any species to the wide range of ecological conditions in this slide we have considered the four ecological conditions first is the rainforest then we have grassland then we have desert here and then the aquatic condition this example uh, we have taken here is a species a which is adapted to the rainforest only because it requires plenty of water and the species is totally terrestrial in nature that is why such a species cannot grow in a grassland nor in a deserts and nor in a aquatic condition so species a has a very narrow ecological range and has a poor adaptability for the rest of the environmental conditions all right
Now, what are the types of the endemism? Now, we are going to see the types of endemism. The very first type of endemism is of ancient endemics. In the ancient endemics, the species are the survivors of once widely distributed species in the past. That is, in a past time, the species is widely distributed on the mother earth, but now that species are found in a very few number. That is, they are the survivors of the past species which is distributed throughout the globe. All right. Although in ancient times they have distributed widely, but now they have very narrow range due to the geological and geographical and climatic conditions. Now, nowadays, the geological, geographical and climatic conditions have been changed and that is why these species are became the endemic species. Again, we have example here is a Ginkgo biloba, which is a living fossil now. Now, this tree represents the Ginkgo biloba. This plant, that is Ginkgo biloba, was spread throughout the world in a past, but due to the certain geographical and climatic conditions, in the recent times, these plants is only found in China and Japan. All right. So this is the first type of endemism, that is the ancient endemism, in which the species in ancient times were widely distributed, but now it has become narrowly distributed and become the endemic. And the example for the ancient endemics is the Ginkgo biloba plant. Now the second type of endemics is a new endemics. Now these species are newly evolved species which have a small range of distributions. These species, that is the species belonging to the new endemics, are newly evolved species. That is in evolutionary time, these are species are newly evolved species, and that is why have a very small range of distribution. These species are originated recently as a result of evolution. And the example for these species is a Piper nigrum. Now this plant is recently evolved and distributed to the very small range. That is why it comes under the new endemics. The third type of endemism we have is a pseudo endemics. These species are mutant forms of their parental species, which cannot compete with their parental species and eventually disappear. Now, in the evolution, we may have studied the mutant species are uh, got created due to the certain mutations, but these new species cannot compete with their parental species and eventually may get disappear. The example for this we have here is a polar bear. Now, this polar bear species is a mutant form of species of their parents, but it is still endemic because it is a mutant form of the parental species and eventually it may get disappeared in the evolution. All right. So this is the third type of the endemism called the pseudo endemics. All right. The fourth type of endemics is a paleo endemics. Now these species are originated in ancient times and remain distributed to the small area due to the favorable conditions. Like the ancient endemics, paleo endemics were also originated in the ancient times. But they, they are not distributed throughout the world as like the ancient endemics, but the paleo endemics are distributed to the very small area, all right, due to the favorable conditions. As you know, many plants and animals require a very specific conditions for the growth. So in a paleo endemics, the, these species are originated in ancient time, but remain distributed to the very small area due to the favorable environmental conditions. Now the example for the paleo endemics we have here is a kiwis bird. Now this kiwis bird has been originated in a very ancient time. But this bird remained restricted to the New Zealand only. And that is why this species comes under the paleo endemics. Alright, so this is the fourth type of endemism that is the paleo endemics. Now for the exam point of view, you should remember some examples of the endemic plants. Alright, now here are, I have mentioned the five plants. You should note it down in your notebook. That is, these species are endemic species. First is the Ficus religiosa. Second, Beautia monosperma. Then, Eagle marvelous. Then, Protolaria juncei. Then, Rhododendron. All right. So, whenever in an examination you write the endemic plants, you should put forward the example for the endemic plants. That is the Ficus religiosa, Beautia monosperma. 
algor more or less protolaria jonesa and rhododendron all right so thank you very much for watching this video please like the video please comment if you have any question and please share this video with your friends who are studying the botany subject and please subscribe to the botany optional channel for the upsc examination thank you very much for watching see you in the next video